want to play Alchemist's board game, but not sure how to solve the logic puzzle part of the game, like me. The logic puzzle is a critical part of the game, and so in this video, we'll show you a few techniques for how to do well in that part. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Ripple University. In this video, we're going to talk about the game Alchemists. It's a worker placement game that has a logic puzzle underneath it. We're not going to take you through the rules of the game. What we're going to do is take you through some techniques for how to track and solve the logic puzzle, because the game really does require that all players be capable of doing that solving. That's correct. So we have done this in the past, but we're going to do a newer version of it with new technology and new everything. And if you want to learn the rules, I'll put in the link in the description below the link to how to play, the full how to play for the game. So without further ado, let's get to the table. In the game of alchemists, there are eight different ingredients and there are eight different alchemical molecules. And at the start of the game, the app will randomly assign each of the molecules to one of the ingredients. The logic puzzle element of the game involves mixing pairs of ingredients together to form one of these seven potions, and then using the rules of alchemy to deduce which molecules relate to which ingredients. The rules for mixing alchemicals are as follows. Each molecule has three aspects, red, green, and blue, and each aspect has two features. It can be either positive or negative, and either large or small. When you mix two alchemicals, look for the aspect which is the same colour, the same sign, but a different size. Here you can see that it's the blue aspect. They are both positive, but one is large and one is small. This is the potion it creates. So here it creates a blue positive potion. By the same set of rules, this pair here produces a red negative potion. This pair here also produces a red negative potion. However, this pair here has no matching aspects. As you can see, they're all the same size and a different sign. Whenever this happens, the potion produced is neutral. It is these rules of mixing which you will use to deduce which ingredients relate to which alchemicals. The simplest information you can gain in this game is by testing on a student or drinking a potion. Scan the ingredient cards into the app, and it will tell you what potion is created by that mix. Put the matching token into the intersection of those two ingredients on your board. Now we know that a potion can only produce a blue positive if the molecules involved have a positive blue aspect. And so, from this information, we can go through both of these ingredients and cross out all of the alchemicals which have a negative blue aspect. This should result in four being crossed out for each ingredient. The other potential outcome of doing such a test is a neutral potion. And once again, you place the neutral potion icon into the intersection of the ingredients. There are only four pairs of alchemicals which will produce a neutral potion. And the way this sheet is laid out, they are the top two rows, the second two rows, the third two rows, and the bottom two rows. If you go through the rules of mixing, you'll see that mixing the molecule in the top row with the one in the second row will produce a neutral potion, because there are no matching aspects. So initially, let's just focus on what that means for the top two rows. What it means is that if the toad is this top molecule, then the chicken foot must be this second molecule, because they make a neutral pair. By the same token, if the toad is not the top molecule, then the chicken foot is not the second molecule, because each alchemical only makes a neutral pair with one other. That means that these two squares in my grid are linked. If one of them is ever proven to be crossed out, then the other one can immediately be crossed out. If one is ever proven true, then the other can immediately be proven true. I'm going to signify this by writing a matching letter in each of these boxes, the letter A. Anytime I later go through and either cross out or circle a space with a letter, I will find all 
of the matching lettered ones and give it the same mark. I can take this approach across every pair of squares that would make a neutral potion in these two columns. So while nothing has been crossed out on my grid yet, all of these new matching pairs are going to help me cross things out more quickly later in the game. Another action in the game is to sell potions to adventurers, and often you'll be doing this to gain money, but you can also gain useful information out of it. To do this, you hit sell potion and you hit the potion you're trying to sell, in this case, blue positive. Scan it into the app and it will give you some information. Here, it's telling you that you're exactly correct and therefore that this mix of ingredients gives you a blue positive. You can now act on this information exactly as you would have as if you had mixed the potion for a student. First, put the blue positive marker in the intersection of those two ingredients. Then go through and cross out all of the molecules for those two ingredients with a negative blue aspect. Now, you've already done this on the scorpion here because you've already seen it creates a blue positive. As such, you don't get to cross out anything else here, but you've got four new items to cross out in the toad column. Now, let's go back and look at the neutral pairs from before. Because I have proven from this result that toad is not this top molecule, then I can deduce from this result that the chicken foot is not this second molecule, the only one which matches to form a neutral pair. Using the method I described before with these letters, I can go down the whole column and essentially cross out every matching letter. So here I've crossed out A, here I can cross out A. Here I've crossed out C, so here I can cross out C, and so on down the column. As you can see, not only have I earned some money out of selling this potion, but I've even gained some information about an ingredient that wasn't in the potion. Sometimes selling a potion will give you ambiguous information. Here, while trying to mix a green negative potion, all I've been told is that I got the sign right, but not the color. For this, I can use one of these multicolored tokens. In this case, it shows either a blue negative or a red negative, because I know it's negative, but not green. What this most directly tells me is that I can cross out for both of these ingredients any molecules for which both the red aspect and the blue aspect are positive. If even one of those two aspects is negative, it's possible for that to produce that potion. So for these two columns, I can only cross out these two molecules in each column. This is less information than I would have gotten out of a complete result where I can usually cross out four. However, let's apply some critical thinking to these results here. This must be either a blue negative or a red negative, but this is already a blue positive, and it's not possible for the same ingredient to create both a positive and negative potion of the same color. That would require the molecule to have both a positive and negative aspect of the same color, and that is not allowed. So I can go right ahead and deduce that this potion actually must be red negative. That then allows me to go through and cross out all of the red positives on both the fern and the scorpion, although I already had them crossed out on the scorpion. Now let's take a look back at what we already know about the scorpion. We already knew that it had a positive blue aspect, but from our other deductions, we can now see that the size of the blue positive aspect must be small. There are only smalls left. That then tells us something about the two ingredients we mixed to form those blue positives. Namely, that they must both have a large blue aspect. Because, if you remember, forming a blue positive potion requires one small blue positive and one large blue positive. So, we can go through both of these ingredients and cross out the small blue aspects. That's these ones here through our neutral pairs from before, that also allows us to cross out these two boxes. There is even more that we can deduce from this grid before getting any more information. Focusing on these two molecules, you'll see that those are now the only options remaining for both the feather and the toad. This now means that we have another set of linked pairs in the grid. If we were to find out that this were the chemical for the toad, then this would have to be the chemical for the feather, and vice versa. 
we can mark this as we did before by adding letters to represent the pairs, like so. We can also go through and cross out those alchemicals for all of the other ingredients. If you think that logic through, consider the situation if this flower turned out to be this alchemical. We would then have to cross out both of these boxes, which through the linked pairs means we would cross out both of these boxes as well, and there would be no molecules left for either the feather or the toad. It ultimately wouldn't work. So I can go through and cross out this row on all of the other ingredients. This scenario will often come up when you've found the two ingredients that form the same potion with a single third ingredient. At this point, we've now got the grid to the state where four of the ingredients have been reduced to two possible options. Once you get to this point, you can start confidently publishing hedge theories. Look at your grid and look at the alchemicals that are left. For example, here, you know from the two that are left that red and blue are both negative. Green could be either negative or positive. As such, you can confidently publish a green hedged theory for this particular chemical. And in fact, if you look across all four of these, you'll find that green is the unknown color in all cases. So you could publish a green hedge about any of them. Of course, this makes sense. If you look at the top of your board, you haven't done any experiments yet which have told you anything about green. In the apprentice version of the game, another way to gain information is to attempt to debunk a theory. Here you choose one of the ingredients, one of its aspects, and then you will find out what the sign of that aspect is. This information is public to all players. In this case, all players could go through and cross out all green positives in their grid without having to place anything on the experiments board. I can now go through and follow similar logic as I did before. My fern only has large red aspects left and I've produced two red potions with it. So each of those must have a small red aspect. So I can cross out this one, which has a large red aspect. And since I've crossed out this H, I can cross out this H. Since I've crossed out K, I can cross out this K. And I can cross out the large red aspect on my scorpion, like so. Again, because I know it must have a small red aspect to match with the large red aspect of the fern. All of a sudden, I've eliminated all but one possibility for four of my ingredients. I know that this is the toad, this is the chicken foot, this is the scorpion, and this is the feather. Since there's only one ingredient per alchemical, I can immediately cross out on the rows for each of those found ingredients. This now allows me to publish confirmed theories on all four of these ingredients. I'll show you now another way to interpret information from selling potions. Suppose you're selling this adventurer a red positive potion and you find out that you've got the sign right, but the color wrong. In this case, that would normally let you mark out an ambiguous, either green or blue positive potion for that particular pair of ingredients. However, there's a useful rule to know about mixing. Any given alchemical, when mixed with the other seven, will form exactly two red potions, exactly two blue potions, exactly two green potions, and a neutral. In this particular case here, I've already mixed two blue positive potions from the scorpion. I can't mix a third, so this cannot be blue positive. It must be green positive. This would let me cross out all of the green negatives for the mushroom, leaving me with only one option left for the mushroom and letting me cross that out for the other ingredients. Once you know some information about some of the ingredients, you can use that to plan your experiments to better work out what's happening with the others. Take, for example, a situation where you have these three ingredients in your hand. You know what the mushroom and chicken foot are and you're trying to work out what the flower is. Look at your sheet and work out what you would get through doing this mixing. So if the flower were this one and you tested it on a student, you would end up with a blue negative. If it were this one, you'd end up with a red negative. And if it were this one, you'd also end up with a red negative. 
So this could be an ambiguous experiment if you were to carry it out. But if you were to do the experiment with the mushroom instead, once again, work it out. If you mix them and it's this one, you would have a red positive. If it's this one, you would have a neutral. And if it's this one, you would end up with a blue negative. So this is a completely unambiguous experiment and this would be a more straightforward way to test on a student to work out what the flower is. The final thing to remember about the logic puzzle in this game is that any result that comes through the app is public information and therefore you want to keep as secret as possible the inputs that you're doing to the experiment. The worst thing you can do is start a round with no cards in your hand, forage two face-up cards into your hand, and then use them in an experiment. If you do that, you're giving everybody else the same information that you've just spent three actions getting for yourself. If you work through the logic puzzle efficiently, it should only take seven experiments for you to solve the puzzle. And so, using your actions to give everyone else that information is going to put you at a big disadvantage. Of course, sometimes you just really need the cards that are there to do what you're trying to do. So, it can be helpful to keep a big hand of ingredient cards, or otherwise try to bluff what you're doing to throw your opponents off the scent. You can also trust in other people's theories, hoping that they're correct, in order to advance your own theories more quickly. That will help you get theories on the board, as long as your opponents were right in the first place. Just be careful of the possibility that they've intentionally hedged that theory. And that's some tips for how to solve the logic puzzle in Alchemists. We hope you find this useful. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to us. You can also do that by hitting the meeple in the corner and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new and exciting videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. And finally, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comment section below. See you in our next video.